We learn about minimum altitudes in IFR training, but let's look at what actually controls how those numbers are determined. This is an IFR en route chart around Asheville, North Carolina, a designated mountainous area. We have an off-route obstruction clearance altitude, or an AROCA, of 9,000 MSL in this area. We also have a Victor Airway, Victor 35, with some minimum altitudes. It also has 9,000 as an MEA starting up north, and then it begins to come down, first to 8,800 after the Busick intersection, then south of the Sugarloaf VOR, it goes down to 6,200, 5,200, and finally 3,200. First, where is that 9,000 Aroka number coming from? It applies to any off-route flight within the quadrant bounding this area here and is designed to give minimum IFR protection above any obstruction or terrain within that quadrant. We can't see terrain on the IFR chart, but we can see it if we bring in the corresponding VFR sectional chart. This quadrant is split up on the VFR chart into four areas, each with their own maximum elevation figure, MEF. This figure is designed to tell you what altitude will be sufficient to clear the highest object in the sector. The highest MEF is over here, at 7,000. It's based on the highest point in the area, which is this peak of Mount Mitchell, at 6684 feet. The MEF is derived by taking this highest point, rounding up to the nearest hundred, and then adding a buffer of a few hundred feet. In this case, it's 300, a larger buffer, because this is a natural obstruction instead of a tower or something, so we allow for some errors in measurement and things like tree growth. Taking these adjustments together, we get 7,000. This is the MEF for the area. Now, the MEF is designed to just allow us to clear obstacles in VFR flight. It's not appropriate for obstruction clearance for IFR flight. Let's look at that mountain peak on the IFR chart. This time, we'll keep the VFR MEFs overlaid. IFR obstacle clearance requirements in mountainous areas are 2,000 feet above the highest point. So we take the VFR MEF of 7,000 here and add 2,000 to get the Aroka of 9,000. This will apply to the entire larger quadrant. The MEA for the Victor Airway is also affected by these obstacle clearance requirements. Within four nautical miles of the airway center line, the MEA has to provide for at least 2,000 feet of clearance, among other requirements like signal coverage. So the MEA on the airway as we pass by Mount Mitchell is also 9,000 feet. South of that, there are no peaks that high, so the MEA can come down to 8,800. And further south still, below the Sugarloaf VOR, it comes down even more to 6,200, then after Tuxto, it goes down to 5,200 for southbound flights. These altitudes are also derived off the highest obstacles near the airway. Even though we still have that Aroka of 9,000 feet, see that the VFR MEF here is only 4,800 MSL. The highest obstacle is just below that, so that may determine MEA height, though MEAs are based off more than just this, as signal coverage is key as well. The result is that these MEAs will typically give you more than just the minimum 2,000 feet of obstacle clearance, but still often be lower than the off-route minimum. Don't get too hung up on trying to determine how the FAA calculates these altitudes. There's a bunch of other factors going into airway minimums, but things like AROCA and MEF are a bit more intuitive, and this look under the hood at controlling obstacle heights should give you a little context on altitude minimums. For more quality insights, check out Flight Insight Ground Schools today at the link here and in the description.